Hey, call me Louis. This is my spot. Louis spot. Where there is a stone and there is a can. Two shots made from a can by white men uh, threatening police. Um, there is no similarity because once you discharge a firearm against law enforcement and law enforcement goes for cover, then the state is under threat. Stones can never put the state under threat. That's what makes a June 16, 1976 generation special. That it confronted well-armed men with live ammunition, with stones. Because we know that the stones may not have that impact, mm -hmm. uh, but stones represent the picket lines. And that's why you will see stones in Colini. Mm -hmm. That's why you will see stones in Polokwane Tsepomatloa who was murdered by, uh, you know, white people uh, and all of that. So there is a difference between terrorism and picket lines. Mm -hmm. And therefore there will not be striking similarities. Mm -hmm. Picket lines are what they are. Discharging that. Even when we're angry at police ourselves, including black communities everywhere else, we have never discharged a firearm on them. Even when we are angry at police and angry at courts, that gives rapist bails, that gives murderers bails, we have never stormed the court. Why? But we have burnt police cars. Yeah, we did. But how do you storm a court? A court, a, 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 an independent judiciary mm -hmm. that is supposed to be a neutral arbiter which all of us must have confidence in. Mm -hmm. You cannot do that to the courts. So, because uh, once you threaten the court, which is the last recourse for any dispute, then let's kiss this democracy goodbye. Because in the absence of the court, there will not be anyone suitable enough to protect this constitution. The judiciary, as an independent uh, arm of the state, cannot be put under threat with guns directed at judicial. Once you do that, you are threatening the constitution. People fight in court. People beat each other in court. It is two individuals or factions confronting one another. It's a heated space. We understand that. But you cannot discharge a firearm in the corridors of judicial and threaten directly the judicial and say to the judicial, bring this person to us. We want to finish off this person. And when the judiciary says he must go back to the cells, you follow him to the cells against the wishes of the judiciary. There is no striking similarities. Even the back office here at the newsroom can keep on feeding you here online all types of similarities that will never arrive at anything that resembles what we are confronted with now. Let me also deal with Pinar. We are not going to Senegal for Pinar. Mm -hmm. We have nothing else to do with Pinar. We are going to Senegal against those who just discharge firearms. Against the police and the judiciary and the state does nothing mm -hmm. about it. We want to show the state that your inability to intervene decisively when it is white people. All the BEE deals that were signed 10 years ago, all white people are reversing them. Because they tell BEE people we don't need them. Why? They've got a big BEE partner in the presidency that protects them. How dare does your president go and launch a project in Moitluf, which is not BEE compliant? Why should these people comply with BEE? So I was saying to the minister, your president, who is adopted by a white family, yeah. has allowed these people to develop this arrogance. And we're not going to allow him or you, through your actions, to make white people to be arrogant and want to subject black people to humiliation. Because yeah. once you humiliate police, you're humiliating a black state, and indirectly, you're humiliating black people. And that pain we suffered during apartheid is resurrected, and we go through it again. We'll never allow that. This nonsense must come to an end at some point. Mm. These whites should know that we are not stepchildren in this country. This is our country. Mm. We too belong here. And if going to Senegal will cause a civil war, if a man exercises his constitutional rights 
that will lead to a civil war. So be it. I'm not talking here from the comfort of my couch in the newsroom Africa offices. I will be in Senegal myself. I will be leading from the front. Do what you want to do. What soldiers? Why should we be scared of retired soldiers when we're not scared of them when they were soldiers? When they legitimately carried guns to kill black people, we confronted them with stones. Mr. Malek, Let history repeat itself. Hmm. Let us confront the same people our parents confronted. Yeah. If that is going to be the case, let it be. Uh, Mr. We're Malek, not going to live in fear here because we think white farmers are former generals. They can go to hell. Mr. Murderous Malema. generals. Mr. Malema, is that what you essentially want? But what is war? When a person says, I'm going to Senegal, to defend a building with my body. I've never told you of AK-47. But, but, I've but never you, told you but of you are also days. saying You are talking war. But you are saying... When I defend myself against white racist and terrorists, mm -hmm. if you are scared of them, it's none of my business, Chief. But you Go are saying... Go on alone. But you are saying... Of being scared of white people. You I'm said, standing up to them. Yeah. I'm standing up to whiteness. I'm standing to white arrogance. I will never allow it to play itself out in South Africa when I'm a leader of a third political party. The EFF's presence in this democracy is to put racists at their own place. And we're going to do that knowing very well that we're going to be called names because of uh, racist apologists, apartheid apologists, and beneficiaries of racism. So we are not part of that nonsense. Self-defense is not a gun. I'm going to defend myself, and you will see there that I can defend myself, and it is allowed by the Constitution. I'm, I'm not Halema. I'm not going to speak like this ANC cowards who are actually beneficiaries of this racism and white arrogance, and who have allowed it. They should have dealt with this thing a long time ago. They have not dealt with it. Till today, Tony, the people who stormed the courts, the people who banned the vehicles, their faces are all over. Mm. Only a person who suffers from bipolar is arrested. That's what happened after 1994. They've never offered an apology. All you did was exactly what you are doing, following nicely well in the footsteps of your grandfathers in the ANC. Let's go beyond and build a country with reconciliation. Mm. Reconcile with people who never said sorry. Reconcile with people who never apologized for their reckless actions and killing of black people. If we allow that nonsense to happen there, it will go all over. You know what these whites do every day? They wake up and block N1. When the taxi people tried to do it, the soldiers shot them because the taxi people were black. They wake up and block N14. Nothing happens to them. No permit, no nothing. This Halema once said to me, when we were marching to Pretoria, he called me to his office and said to me, Julius, you cannot march on the M1 because the M1 is the road that connects everything. So once you block N1, you've got a potential of blocking an ambulance in Varambad, which has got nothing to do with your march here. Why has Kalema not offered the same advice to the white racists who are blocking N1 Every time they wake up in the morning, Papa last from uh, bells, clip drift and coke. Kebima Pato did the same just last week. He blocked a highway. He doesn't have numbers that don't work when he block a highway with a crutch. Kebima Pato has got no people, has got no numbers. Hmm. There are very few MK people. Those drunkards that are following Kebima Pato everywhere hmm. have got nothing to do or, or the same capacity as these farmers who are always blocking anyone here in Khauti. Mm. I've never seen any police action against them. Mr. The people who must be protected in South Africa, who the war has been declared against, mm. is women and children. It's the rape victims, not the farm people. My man, let's go and check. One year, 21,000, more than 21,000 murder cases were reported. You know how many were in the farms, not the farmers, in the farms, mm. 97, not even more than 100. And you want to say to me, this is a national phenomenon. It is not. It is an isolated incident. One is too many, I agree. Let's deal with murder decisively. If you want to talk special attention, if you want to talk 
a special teams brought together, special courts, special prosecutors, special police, focusing on special issue. That issue should be rape, that issue should be murder of women and children and the elderly gogos. Those are the people who are the victims of the current crimes in South Africa, not farmers. I'm saying to you 97. So if we're to go to the farmers, it's actually going to be way less than that. You want us to create a special unit for them because they are white? It will never happen. Maybe the ANC government will do it. When the EFF comes in, it's going to destroy that type of a unit and refocus that channel where it is needed the most. There is scientifically, clearly, scientifically, there is no any form of evidence mm. that farmers are being finished in South Africa. It's not true. That sums it up for this video. Did you like or do you hate what you just watched? Share your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below. I encourage having a proper discussion on matters like this without having me impose my opinions and ideas on this matter. Otherwise, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. That's the only way YouTube can know this video is so much interesting and share it out there to more avid viewers just like you. Make sure to subscribe to this channel if you also have not done so and click the notification bell so as to be notified as soon as I make new uploads on videos just like this. My name is Louis. Until next time, peace out.